Mr. Aslam, uh, is there any nexus between extremism and climate change? And to what extent the international community is aware of it, uh, including Pakistan? Well, I think uh, I, I would answer your second question first, that the international community is becoming very seriously aware of this issue. Uh, unfortunately, we in Pakistan at this time are not able to connect this linkage, but there is a very strong linkage over here. And uh, 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 the unfortunate or fortunate fact is that you know, Pakistan is the one country which is uh, on the on the front line of the two defining wars of our generation: the war against climate change and the war against terrorism. We are, the, you know, the foot soldier on both these wars, and the linkage between the two is, is arises from the fact that climate change, when it uh, affects or impacts a country which is not prepared to deal with climate change, like Pakistan, and if you do, just look at what happened this year, you know, the damage cost of the flood which was climate triggered in Pakistan and I say climate triggered because of two facts. One, because it happened because of the fast melting glaciers. Mm -hmm. Number two, it happened because of the shift in monsoons towards the northern areas. Mm -hmm. Both these facts had the trigger of climate change behind them. Mm -hmm. And what, what, what the results were that you know a country like Pakistan got impacted by about 10 billion dollars in terms of its economic cost. Mm -hmm. And in terms of the climate refugees which were out homeless and, and uh, helpless, mm -hmm. we had about 20 million climate refugees which were created overnight mm -hmm. uh, through this one climate impact. And what happened is that when, when these climate refugees are not provided assistance immediately and when the adaptation uh, uh, capacity of the country is not able to deal with this crisis, then it breeds extremism and it, it breeds, it, it goes towards, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 feeling of uh, helplessness and, and, and this becomes a breeding ground for further poverty and this becomes a breeding ground for further alienation of this of these climate refugees. Uh, even a country like the US could not deal with, it, with its climate refugees. When they were hit by Hurricane Katrina, even today, after I think two and, two and a half years of that hurricane hitting them, New Orleans has still got refugee camps. Uh, looking after their refugees. So for countries like Pakistan, this becomes a very serious issue because it becomes a multiplier for terrorism. Mm -hmm. You know, this climate change becomes a terrorism multiplier mm -hmm. and it, uh, it just triggers uh, uh, more deprivation, it triggers more uh, uh, frustration, it triggers more helplessness if you're not able to deal with the situation. Mm -hmm. So that is why uh, uh, countries like Pakistan need priority access to any funding which is available on climate change to help us to develop the capacity and the infrastructure to not only uh, have early warning systems in place to know when a crisis is hitting and also have the adaptive capacity to deal with this situation when it happens. But the government and establishment hobnobs with extremist terrorists, well, promotes a, militancy and it's a security state yeah, and I mean, that, the philosophy of a strategic debt considering all these things in mind. How that, how a good that process. is that is if you can control that strategic depth. Mm -hmm. You know, in this case, you cannot control that strategic depth. It is something which happens overnight. Mm. My yeah. point is that the establishment who makes the policy does it know that climate change is. I think you know is I, enhancing extremism. The establishment in the U.S. knows it very clearly. Mm -hmm. You know, the the the, uh, in the in the U.S. government, they have now taken climate change as a security national security threat. Mm -hmm. Climate change is one of the, uh, along with terrorism, now climate change is also ranked as a national security threat. Mm -hmm. And this is not something which is left only to the scientists uh, or the you know environmentalists to look at. They, are, they have got a, a separate section within the Pentagon. Mm -hmm. And the US establishment is, is directly uh, you know, engaged into the climate change debate. Mm -hmm. In Pakistan, unfortunately, that has not happened so far. Mm -hmm. But I think that... I think there this, is no awareness at all about it. Very limited awareness, but I think that uh, this flood this year was uh, uh, gave gave a rude wake up call. I think it had started in, during the earthquake. The earthquake is is not linked with climate, but it is again you know it is linked with a disaster, mm -hmm. which uh, which uh, happens uh, uh, because of any reasons. But uh, we have uh, our projections for the future. Unfortunately, are that we're go going to have more climate disasters as our glaciers melt. 
and water. But is there any study that could reveal that yes, climate change has enhanced militancy and extremism in the country? Yes. Or so many suicide bombers became suicide bombers because of floods or... I think uh, that's an area of research which, which needs to be researched upon. Uh, but so far, but there, so is far there is none. But what is there are studies now available uh, which are saying that you know climate change along with uh, the uh, the terrorism are the two basic national uh, uh, international security risks and these studies are available on the if you look at what, the, was the it discussed at Cancun this issue this issue particular issue was not discussed uh, within the framework of the negotiations mm -hmm. but it was uh, definitely discussed on the sidelines okay thank you very much sir